Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, let's continue on with our Captain Quark character here. Um, we've created a polygon plane, we've given it a mirror modifier, and now let's hit Control Tab and switch to Edge Mode and select this edge right here. And what I'm going to do is just use the Extrude tool and just create an edge loop right around the mouth, just like we have over here. So I'll hit the E key and I'll move the mouse and we'll just start bringing these around. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go back to the vertex tool and just begin moving these around a bit. So I'm going to try and plant this right there on the edge of the nose. And then if I select this other vertex, it will of course select that edge. And I'll hit E again and we'll keep going. Now, this reference image here is just a guide. You don't have to follow it exactly, but if you're just beginning, I would suggest it. It's really helpful. So if you look at this, we've got one, two, three polygons here at the top of the mouth, and then one more and we get to the edge. So I can just hit E and extrude and bring it right over here to the edge. And now I can take these points and begin moving them around so that we get a similar kind of structure as we have over here. Now, this character isn't the same, and no two characters are the same, but that's okay. We're going to just try and get it as close as we can. I'm going to leave a little bit of room for the actual mouth or the lips here. Move these up like that. There we go. All right, so I've just tried to space these out as best I can. So now I'm going to select these two vertices, and if I hit the E key, I'll extrude that edge. And now I'll just hit the R key and rotate it around like that. Now we have that kind of bend around the mouth. And I'll hit E again and extrude, and it looks like we've only got two faces down here underneath the mouth. Let's go ahead and go with that. We may need more as we extrude down into the body, but for now let's go ahead and go with that. So I'll make these a little bigger, and I'll hit E again, and as I bring these right into the center of the grid, they'll clip and they'll attach to each other right there automatically because we've got clipping on down here. All right, so now I'm just going to do a little bit of arranging. I think I want it to be about like this. There we go. So now, as you can see, we've got just this general structure that we have over here. It's a very different shape because the character is different, but that's okay. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and extrude up to get the nose. So I'm going to select these three vertices right here, and I'll hit E, and I'm going to click, and then I'll drag up with the move manipulator, drag up to here. And now I can begin arranging these points around the nose just a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is use these three points to create four edges. So I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit right here. And then I'm going to take this point and move it so it's right in line kind of with this point here. And the reason why I'm doing that is to just give myself a little bit of extra geometry around the nose. You can see here how that's been done. That's a good way to add that extra face there that'll give you some geometry to create that little bulge on the side of the nose. All right, so maybe I'll move these down even more so they're in line like this and like this. Now, we can take all of these points, these four points, right? We've created three edges out of three points right there. I'll hit the E key and click and then drag up with the move manipulator. And now we've got a little bit of extra geometry going forward. And now to continue on up, we only need these three. So I'm going to collapse these together just a little bit. And now if I select these three, I can move them up to just below the eyes here. I'll hit E and drag them up. And now we're going to need to fit between the eyes, aren't we? So we're going to need to collapse these a little bit more. He's got uh, very close together eyes, beady little eyes. 
So I'll move these in a bit. And I'm going to need to move them in even more, I think, like this. Now I'll select these three points, hit E, and move them up to just above the eyes right up here. And I'm going to want to angle them down like this. Now, the way I drew him, he's got a kind of a grimace or frown or angry brows here. We're not going to create that right now. We're going to try and do it a little bit more of a relaxed pose. So now that we've got this structure in place, let me hit the Z key and you can kind of see what we're doing here. This loop is going to go all the way around and then we'll have geometry to continue loops around here as well. Now, let me come over here to the mirror modifier and turn on this edit cage. So if I turn this on, then we can see the edit cage all the way around. All right, so we're getting there. Let me hit the Z key again so we can see the image a little better. Now, if you want, you can actually turn on multiple components within the object. So currently we have just vertices, so we can select things by vertex. You can also shift select another one of these, say the edges, and now we can also select by the edge as well. So I'm just going to drag this in a little bit tighter, and then I'm going to extrude and pull out in the x-axis, and then scale in so it kind of collapses down. So this is going to be that inside corner of the eye. So I'll just collapse that down a bit. And what this allows us to do, if you can see over here, it allows us to now have edges on the top and the bottom to go and loop around the eye. So now if I select this edge, I can begin the loop up around the eye. So I'll hit E and drag, and I can hit the R key and rotate a bit, scale out or scale in, whatever is needed here. I'll hit E again and drag a little bit farther, rotate again, scale in or out as needed, and maybe one more time, E and this time I'll move this in a bit because we don't have much room on the side of his head there. There we go. Now I'll select this edge and just like we did down here around the mouth, let's just extrude this and then rotate this around so we can then continue on the loop around the bottom of the eye. And here let's go ahead and hit E, scale maybe, rotate, and I'm just hitting E and moving and then hitting R and rotating and then hitting S and scaling and just moving these around till I get them in position. Now I want to connect these up. So I want to connect this edge and I want to connect this edge. So there are a couple of ways that we can do this. One way is just to hit the F key and that will make a face between selected vertices. The other way we could do it is press Control E and then choose Bridge Edge Loops, and that will essentially do the same thing. So for any tool you choose in Blender, there's probably always at least a couple more that you could do the same thing. There's always many ways to do the same thing. I'll just hit the F key here, and that creates a face. All right, so we now have loops around the mouth and the eyes. It doesn't look real great now, does it? But that's okay. We're just establishing the basic loop structure. That's all we're doing. Now, you can see over here that what we're doing is just on a flat plane. It's just flat, right? I'll just tumble around with the middle mouse button here. And you can see it's just a flat plane. Once we get the loops drawn out the way we want them, then we'll begin pulling it out into three dimensions. All right, let me go back to the side view here. And then let's try and continue um, this edge loop coming off of the nose here. Let's try that one. So here's that edge. We could hit the E key and begin extruding down around here and then connecting these up. We could do that. Or we could also just come through here and select these edges and hit the E key, and then hit the S key and scale out. Now, we're going to have to take this point and move it around and connect it up, and that's fine. 
we'll just select these two points and then press Alt M and we can choose at first, at last, at center, whichever one you want at this point in time. Um, I'm going to take this and move it down some so it kind of loops around down there. There we go. Um, I think this needs to be in a little bit tighter. So I'll move this in because we don't have a whole lot of room here to the cheeks. And maybe I need to bring this in a little bit too. Let me try that. All right, so we've got that edge loop taken care of. Let's try one more. Let's uh, work with this one here. I'm going to select these edges around like this. Hit the E key and click, and then I'll hit the S for scale and scale out just a bit. And now these I'm going to have to hook up here. So this one needs to go up into here. So I'll select this one, shift select this vertex, and press Alt M and at last. And then this one needs to be connected up to here. Once again, Alt M at last. And this one here I'll bring down a bit because this is this one right here right there. And I'll select these two and connect them up. Alt M at last. And now let's just adjust these a little bit. We don't need a whole lot of adjusting here. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that um, the edges coming off of the mouth should kind of radiate out in a sunburst pattern. So you see how this is kind of radiating out and out and now these are radiating up. So as much as you can, you may not be able to get it exactly, but if you can get them so they kind of radiate out in a sunburst pattern, you'll be doing pretty well. Now it looks like I'm getting kind of close to the edge here. Maybe I better move these in a little tighter. So we have room for a couple of others in there. So now this edge right here needs to come down through here and down around the bottom of the mouth as well. And that edge is right here. That's this edge. So let's try that. I'll select these edges again. E for extrude, scale out a bit. Now we need to connect them up again. So I'll move this in. Little Need a little more room for one more edge loop in there. Move this one down so we get kind of a, a sunburst pattern coming out. Move this one around like that. And this one needs to hook up with this right here. Shift click and Alt M at last. There we go. Now we've really got just one more to do here for now. So this one right here, this final edge, we need to add that. And this chin is still so huge, we're going to really need to do some adjusting down here before we pull it out into three dimensions. But let's go ahead and select these edges. Hit E again, scale out, and there we go. So now we've got this last edge that we can use, this edge loop, for our face. And there we go. Okay, so what I'll be doing is going through and kind of readjusting a lot of these points just to kind of get everything evenly spaced. Um, and as I said, so we've got kind of a, a sunburst pattern coming out of the mouth there, as well as the eyes too. We might want to go through and adjust all of that. So just try and get it so it's evenly spaced, well proportioned before we begin pulling everything out into three dimensions. And we'll start doing that in the next video. See you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. 
We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.